Welcome to Blinkers Off with your hosts, Jared Welch and Aaron Halterman. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Blinkers Off. It's a very special Blinkers Off today. Jared is not with us, but we do have a guest to fill in, and it's the best one we've ever had. I'm just going to say it. My buddy, Paul, uh, Paul Withrow, he's in the Fantasy League. He's been on Blinkers Off before. Paul, it is also a very special day. It's your birthday, so it's like when we needed a fill in, you were the one. So, Paul, welcome to the show. How you doing? I, I'm good, and uh, you know, what What better uh, uh, birthday am I in the middle of than the one right now, right? So it starts with a, a, a Knights Bridge uh, victory earlier today for me, and hopefully ends with the Cyclones uh, victory tonight, and in the middle of it, I get to spend some time and talk about horses with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's the perfect birthday. I, I, I think it is the perfect birthday. Yeah, better call Paul. You just got to call him up. You tell go. you what, I'll tell you a little story. I, I didn't call him because nobody calls anymore, but I text Paul about 30 minutes before we were going to do the show. I said, hey, you want to do it? He said, yeah, sure. So it was easy enough. So, Paul, I appreciate it. Uh, let's talk about Cyclones real quick because that game is going to come up. How do I... I feel like I've kind of adopted the Cyclones out. My Sooners are out, and, and, you know, I like that team like you've been, like I've talked to you about. But how are you feeling about tonight's game, tough game, Illinois? You know, to me, this is probably the the second toughest matchup in the entire tournament they could face. The only one tougher would be if they win tonight and play UConn, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, You you got to talk about uh, Illinois. I mean, you know, they have just had a phenomenal second half of this year. Uh, And, you know, they're – They've got the one thing that that could be kryptonite for Iowa State, which is athletic scorers, right? Um, if Iowa State goes through a scoring slump, it could be a, a bad night for us. Uh, but that defense is always going to hold us in game. And and you saw it uh, a little bit in that Washington State game, right? Washington State jumped out to a lead, but that defense is just so brutal on teams that they could not sustain it for 40 minutes, and Iowa State ran away with from it in the second half. And I can see the exact same thing happening tonight. In fact, I hope that's what happens is Illinois just kind of gets tired of, of having to play 30 full seconds to get a shot off uh, uh, each time. And finally just says, I'm done with it. That's the key. They've got to get the game in their, in their flow, right? In their, uh, you know, style of play, Iowa state style play. I'm talking about, you got to slow them down and you make it a, a possession by possession game. I think Iowa state can beat them. So, well, I think they will beat them. Not can, I think they will beat them. I should say that's the game of the tournament for me so far. I can't wait for that one. We got to get this show done. So we don't have anything going on for that <laughs> game. Right. So um, we recap uh, what happened last weekend uh, to start this show. Uh, so we'll do a little bit of that, uh, of what happened last weekend. We really don't need to talk about the Jeff Ruby because it doesn't have a lot of Derby implications. You claimed endlessly. It was a great claim. I thought he was fantastic. So I will, I guess, ask you, I know you're probably disappointed that endlessly is probably not going to the Derby, but do you agree with the move to bring him back to the turf? 100%. Actually, when I claimed him, I thought that that is what would happen. The, yeah, he yeah. would he would run in the Jeff Ruby, and, and I thought he was the, the class of that race, and he showed it, right? Um, just ran off the screen, and, and I texted you right after and said, we might have we just seen the best three-year-old. He's just yep. going to run on the turf the rest of the year and not not on the dirt. So that was before Knightsbridge ran today. So, yeah. um, but uh, no, I, I think McCarthy had a plan, and and I really respect a trainer that that does what puts a horse in the best position to consistently win, and that's what he's doing. Yep. No, I totally agree. I I thought, boy, I hope you know running in the Derby doesn't kind of set that horse back because he looks like he's really coming on. So it was the right move. Uh, let's go. We'll get to night night's bridge in a second, but let's go to catching freedom over in Louisiana, the Louisiana Derby down at fairgrounds. Look, I, I think up the back stretch, Paul, we were all a little bit worried about him. It, you know, he does come from out of it, but not that far out of it, but a last to first stretch run there to get the job done. What were your thoughts on catching freedom? We, I, I thought he was ultra impressive in that race, uh, you know, and, you know, he, he couldn't have had a better jockey on it. Cause if you, if you go back to the beginning of that race, right. Uh, your horse, you know, breaks through the gate. And, yeah. and, and I saw an interview with Pratt afterwards and Pratt talked about how unsettling that was, you know, for his horse for catching freedom. And, and, and he came out of the gate slow and then he got pinched and, and Pratt didn't panic. Right. He just, he let him go to the back and, and he, 
and I, I think Brat, Pratt knew quickly he was on the best horse. And, you know, when they got to the top of the stretch, you saw, you know, Track Phantom, who just dis, doesn't want to go that far. Good horse, but doesn't want to go that far. And you saw those other horses start to come back to him. And wow, did catching Freedom's motor just kick in. And he, because the pace was not, you know, a, a tremendously fast pace and he just mowed him down. It, it, I, I thought it was very impressive. Uh, definitely the best uh, um, performance that we've seen in Louisiana. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, I, you know, I, I think the biggest thing with, with catching Freedom, he ran straight, you know, I, I thought that was the biggest thing. Like, and, we just hadn't seen it. And we kind of talked about it. You know, he didn't run straight in the Smarty Jones in the stretch, but those horses weren't good enough to beat him anyway. And then he went up against better horses in that risen star, like you mentioned, and he can't run left and right in the stretch yeah. and beat and beat good horses. And so he kind of had his head on uh, correctly. We had a ton of money lined up with him on the wagering guide. So we were extremely nervous at the backside, but you did kind of get that feeling about mid stretch when you finally picked him up and you thought, Oh, he's moving much better uh, than everybody else. Uh, I just, I'm not sure about him in the Derby. I don't, know if he's ready to win a race like that or not you kind of text me after and you thought i think at this moment he's the derby favorite now that we've kind of let it digest a little bit kind of overall what are your thoughts on catching freedom for the derby so to, to just clarify that a little bit so you guys had a, had a great conversation last week about um moving through this derby cycle a week at a time right yeah. so coming out of last week you know, catching freedom, you know, would be your number one horse. And then, you know, we've got three big preps this week. Uh, and my full expectation is somebody is going to step up today uh, or, or Saturday and, and probably tell us that they're going to be a favorite over catching freedom. But coming out of last weekend, you know, he was the most impressive horse that was going to go on into the Derby. I don't think his style is, is going to be um, a Derby champion either. Uh, you know, he hasn't shown us uh, what Mage and even Rich Strike did the last couple of years with that ability to weave in and out of traffic. Uh, mm -hmm. And in the Derby, you're not coming around, you know, 1100, 11 other horses, you're coming around 19 other. If he, if he doesn't break well in the Derby, uh, then, you know, he's going to, he's going to attempt to do what Mo Donegal did a couple of years ago. And Mo Donegal might've been the best horse in that race. Um, yep. the year Rich Strike won, but Rich Strike saved all the ground, came up that rail. Mo Donegal was out in the parking lot and could not close and get there. You kind of made a point to me after Mage won it last year. You said, you know, I, I think you sometimes we got to look for the most athletic horse. If they're a closing, if you're going to back a closer, we should, I should say, we, I, I need to look for some athleticism. And, and that's kind of, you, you kind of go, well, how do you really measure athleticism in a horse? But it's kind of what you're talking about proven they can go inside and outside and kind of weave through traffic and stuff like that, where you're right. Like Sierra Leone and catching freedom. What have they done? They kind of loop the outside and we've seen it. If you take that route in the Derby, you better be way the best, like much, much the best. And so that is kind of the worry. And you're right. I think I mean, Sierra Leone seems like a huge horse. It's, he's going to have trouble doing that. And you look at catching freedom. I, I do think he looks a little more athletic, just the way he runs and like his size and stuff. But he's got that goofiness about him, right? And that is a little bit of a worry. Um, one horse that I think, if we'll move on to today, I was ready for Knightsbridge, and I know you were. Or, or, I know you were too. That was, I thought that was ridiculously good. What did you think of your your uh, fantasy horse there, Knightsbridge? You know, I, I never never thought he was going to lose at any moment in that race. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he you could see that Alvarado had him well under control uh, the entire time, and he did. He didn't face. Let's let's be honest. He didn't face a great field today. But what you were looking for was what happened, right? Um, he put him away, and, and then he just stomped on him, and then he just geared down. Um, I I thought. Um, Physically, he's probably the most impressive horse that we've seen come through this. Uh, he's a beautiful looking horse. I mean, you cannot look at him and not, you know, just think that's a beautiful, beautiful looking horse. Uh, as I texted you earlier today, it's a shame that that he is running March 28th and not February 28th. Um, because I think I think we probably would have seen something special on Derby Day um, if he was able to get there. 
in not only Kentucky Derby Day, but I think it, we, we're going to talk about the Florida Derby here in just a second. I think he would be who we we're talking about the most, right? If if he could have got that allowance race, say he could have got that allowance race on Fountain of Youth Day, which we kind of talked about that privately. It's like, hey, he's he's kind of working back towards it. Maybe he'll get there Fountain of Youth Day, and then he kind of missed the work again. It's like, oh, he's not going to make it. But Paul, the thing, the thing that I keep kind of going back to, and, and uh, Curtis, I'll put your your comment up there because you're alluding to what I'm getting ready to say. Catching Freedom, Sierra Leone, uh, there there are others out there as well. That's that they're all kind of come from behinders, and that's okay. I don't have a problem with it. But in the Derby, it's always a little terrifying, right? You want that horse that can be forwardly placed. The perfect thing in the Derby and with a lot of races, you don't want a horse that's so headstrong they have to get the lead, but you want enough uh, tactical speed where you don't get way behind uh, a few, you know, a lot of horses. To me, that's Knight's Bridge. I think he does everything the right way. You watch him, and it's like he can go fast, but if one's going really fast, he'll stalk him. He'll sit there, have the perfect trip. That's kind of the horse I've been looking for this whole time, and. I think track phantom is that horse, but he's not good enough. And he doesn't want to go that long where he, but he does kind of do things the right way. This Knights bridge. I, I don't know, man. He, he seems like the, the horse to me. I mean, he, he seems, he did everything how he's supposed to do it. I feel like today. Well, you know what, when, when you watch him and if you just take away the names, right. Uh, you, you think that Nisos is still in training and he just ran today. Right, right. now yeah. they're by the same sire. They're by the same damn sire. They're, they have there's a lot of pedigree uh, alike in those two. Um, and they look alike when when they run. I mean, when Nisos uh, won his last race, had Baffert been allowed to run in the Derby, that was everybody's pick, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because he's that horse, and uh, and, and he's gone, and and obviously Knightsbridge is not going to make it. And and I think that's what makes uh, these next couple of weeks really really fun, is because somebody. Somebody has to be there the first Saturday in May, and, and who's it going to be? All right. Well, that's a great segue. It's like you're an old pro at this because <laughs> we're getting to it. Let's get to it. Let's try to break down uh, the races here. So what we're going to do, Paul and I are going to take you through the three Kentucky Derby prep uh, races going on this weekend, and then we're also going to, at the end, talk about the Dubai World Cup, you know, rich one of the richest races, not the richest anymore. So uh, we have got a lot to cover. All right, Paul, let's get to it. Um, let's see. What does Jared usually do? He usually goes, let's go. Okay. Now we can get to it. Now we can officially get to it, Paul. Uh, we'll, we'll start off with the golf stream here. So, uh, I think he counts down three, two, one. Now we can do it. All right, guys, let's kick it off here. Golf stream park is where we're going to go. We're going to go to the Florida Derby. It's going to be race 14 on the card, a field of 11 grade one event here favoritism goes to the number 10 fierceness at eight to five. All right, Paul, where are you going? Well, this one, this one's the most challenging of the three, I think, to really sort through and, and figure out, uh, you know, who's going to be there at the end. It, Cause you, it's a tale of two races, right? You either have fierceness who shows up with, uh, uh, you know, his two best races and he trounces this field, you know, and doesn't look back or you you have the fierceness that has just thrown two clunkers uh, and then it becomes really anybody's race and and I have a problem you know certainly putting my money you know if I'm do, doing a win bet it is not going to be on fierceness you you, you know you, you can't take that bet at uh, the do low dollar that he's going to be or pay out yeah. uh, so I ultimately bounced all over this board uh, and I came back to Hades. Uh, you know, I love what Hades trainer has said about this horse coming in. So, you know, Hades uh, trainer, you know, he, he went on record the other day and said that he would be shocked if this horse did not win. And, and you know, that that is a big statement, you know, uh, coming from from a guy that most most average fans don't know who he is. Now, this is a guy that has had success uh, on the Triple Crown trail it's been you know quite a while since he's been here but uh, he's had triple triple crown success he's positioned this horse uh, uh right he did not go to the fountain of youth and targeted this race uh, the horse is coming in training very well i think he's going to be on the lead again i mean i i tried to find somebody that 
naturally is going to go with him. And, and I don't know that there's anybody that's going to outpace him, you know, to the lead. He's going to be out of that two hole. So he's, he's going to have a, um, a quick, uh, you know, opportunity to be on the front. Remember it's uh, breaking from a mile and eighth, you know, it's a quick turn um, into that, uh, or it's quick uh, into that turn, into that first turn, uh, which I think also goes against fierceness. Uh, you know, I, I put down the note as, as, as kind of, preparing for this, I was like, you know, the one thing I want to bring up about fierceness in that outside post is remember, you know, Gunrunner when he broke uh, in uh, the Pegasus mm -hmm. and he came out of the 12 hole and he went off at even money that day when he should have been one to nine because people were scared about him coming from an outside post. Gunrunner's one of the best horses that we've seen in, in my lifetime. Fierceness is no gun, gun runner and fierceness to me lacks the, the desire to win. So if he has any traffic problems or any challenge coming out of that 10 hole, um, I think he's going to be at a real disadvantage. And, and that's why I ultimately ended up with Hades on top. Yeah, I feel like you're right from the 10 hole. You're a horse like fierceness. You've kind of shown you don't really like to be around other horses it kind of forces the hand to just gun it out to the lead uh, and, and and try to get to the front and cross over on everybody. And I, I think you're right. I think he's at a major disadvantage here. I'd like him better if he was at the, at the two hole where Hades is and he can kind of go to the front. I'm on the same kind of thought process as you. I'm going to fade fierceness in this spot as well. Um, you know, I, I kind of look at it like this, uh, obviously a great debut, um, the second race, I do think you can make some excuses for him. The track was extremely just sloppy. He never really looked comfortable. If you go back and watch the replay of that race, even when he wasn't firing yet, when you didn't really, when you, let me back up, even when he was backing, before he was backing up, he didn't look comfortable. So it's like, okay, obviously Breeders' Cup, great race. I'm struggling to find the excuse in the last race. That's the problem with me. He kind of had it won. All he has to do is have just a little bit of kick and he wins that race. And he kind of eyeballed uh, Hades and Hades rallied back on him and fierceness just stopped. He backed up so bad that he, you know, domestic product was able to pass him. Like, and again, he, he goes backwards. I really don't think this horse has any heart. I, I don't think he, quote unquote needs the lead. I think he just needs to, when he turns for home, he's way ahead and nobody's around him. I, I think that's the biggest problem. And I think when you look at fierceness and you look at, if you look at him and Hades side by side in that race, fierceness is a tiny little horse. And mm -hmm. seriously, people may not realize this horses get intimidated. He might just be intimidated by other horses. Um, so I'm with you. I, I can't back him. He just didn't have an excuse last time out. Uh, that being said, I didn't put Hades on top. I am going to use him, though. Um, I put Conquest Warrior, the nine horse, on top. I, I really, really love what this horse is doing and what he's building. When you look at the uh, Maiden Special Weight, which was the, the debut race, he got beat by El Capi. Shout out to El Capi. Who knows when we'll see you again. But that was a typical Mott first-time start, just trying to get a race under their belt. He got in so much trouble in his next start. I don't know how he ever beat Antiquarian. I really don't. But he was able to rally and beat him. And then I know it was Merritt's not a good horse, and, and all those other horses and that allowance is uh, that allowance they weren't good. He dusted him. He beat him similar to how Knight's Bridge was able to beat uh, th that field today. I, I think there's a lot more to him. He's got a win at a mile and an eighth. I, I think he's the one that beat. So I went Conquest Warrior on top. I think he'll swoop by him all. So you're on Hades. Who else are you kind of looking for in this race? Well, I do want to say that I like that pick of Conquest Warrior because I, I really think that uh, Hades is going to be out front, at, which means somebody has to come get him, right? And I don't think this field is, is all that strong. But the one horse that could really break here and, and be something special out of this race, because I don't think it's fierceness, could be conquest warrior. He, you know, yeah. Shug McGay, he's a great trainer and he knows how to, how to, how to get a horse ready and he's not going to rush one right either. But I think conquest warrior, uh, is certainly the horse that could come get him. One, one horse I, I want to ask you about, um, because I do think that uh, at, at these odds, you have to, you have to pay attention to, uh, to him. 
Uh, and so I wanted to bring up uh, Seminole Chief, right? Okay. Um, so I think there, there could be a lot of crazy things that happen in this race. If, you're, if fierceness doesn't fire and, and conquest warrior isn't as good as what we, what we hope, um, who else, who else could, could step up and, and, and Seminole Chief, you look at his breeding and you say, probably not, you know, a mile and eighth horse, but his only uh, victories, you know, outside of his maiden have come at longer distances. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, his, his last race, he got on the lead uh, and, and took a gate to wire. This could be the horse that potentially takes the lead away from Hades in my mind, if anybody does. Uh, and again, I don't expect a fast pace here. Um, so if somebody gets out, gets out front uh, and is brave enough to take uh, take it the distance. Maybe it's this horse. Uh, this is could be well over his head, but maybe it's this horse that gets out there and gets brave on the lead. Yeah, thirty to one. I think I think there's worse horses you could play. And you kind of mentioned it. Kind of got back going last time out. The I mean, the withers just kind of draw a line through that. That was a non-effort, and he's he's kind of the same. He's had some non-efforts, and then he's had some good ones. He's a lot like a fierceness in that way i you know my longer uh price here i thought bail us out was kind of interesting the three horse uh for todd pletcher this horse coming off of a maiden special weight or a uh, maiden special weight went over the synthetic but it was a two-turn race i thought he really improved in that race uh after just a, a poor race on the dirt i you know you get irad aboard in this spot i thought it was interesting that he jumps on one he kind of had to ride somebody though uh there wasn't much out there for him so I, I, I thought the three bail us out might be getting better. Might be the horse kind of stretching out now to a mile and an eighth, uh, might like it a little bit. What'd you think about bail us out? Well, he's got the right connections, right? Um, you know, Pletcher, um, Irad and every, it, it seems like every year Pletcher does this to us, right? You know, his, mm -hmm. his season seems to have come off the rails as far as getting a, uh, a derby champion, uh, and then all of a sudden you look up and he's got five horses in the Derby and you wonder how it happened. Yep. You know, this could very well be that horse that, you know, gets first or second in this race and comes out of nowhere and, and just becomes another Pletcher special, some horse that maybe, maybe, you know, will, will not do anything in the Derby, but ends up breaking from the gate. Yep. No, I absolutely get second somehow in this race, like you said, and, and finds a way. It it just kind of feels like we're going to get a logical winner and then it might be something weird because it's this, the inconsistencies of some of these horses. All right. Is there anybody else you want to talk about before we move on? No, I, I think it's, it's really, you know, comes down to um, what does fierceness do? You know, yeah. it, and nobody knows, you know, it, I guarantee you Pletcher doesn't know. Um, they, they have no idea what's going to happen when he, when he breaks from that gate, what does he do? Um, if he doesn't show up, uh, then, uh, you know, I, I think the two logical horses are, are Hades and conquest warrior. Uh, one's going to be out front. The other one has the potential to be the class of, of this race. Uh, and then it gets crazy from there. Yeah, I think you're right. And and in just a little insider knowledge, they didn't have any idea what fierceness was going to do at the Breeders' Cup either. And they they are admitting they don't really know here either. So it's just going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. All right, you're on number two, Hades. I'm on number nine, Conquest Warrior. Also, Jared is on number nine, Conquest Warrior as well. He wanted me to make sure to give out his picks there. So uh, Paul on the two, Jared and I both on the nine. All right. Let's move on here and let's go uh, to the Arkansas Derby. That's what we will do next here on the show. And uh, another big one, obviously, a grade one race, the Arkansas Derby live at Oaklawn Park. Let's see, what race do they have this one slot as? Race 12 here at Oaklawn. Field of 10 for this one, Paul. Uh, I, I don't know. It's a mixed bag is how I would I would call it. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pumped or not for this race. But let's hear what you have to say about the Arkansas Derby. Well, I think if you like a horse, you're you're, you're going to get a, a decent payday out of this, uh, you know, because with Muth, uh, Mystic Dan, and Timberlake all being in there, I mean, they're going to they're going to take the 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 lion's share of the money, but none of them are going to go off at three to five, four to five, you know, mm -hmm. even money move, maybe, maybe six to five, seven to five. He seems like the logical favorite here, uh, you know, but I think you're going to get, you're going to get value on, on a horse. If you, if you really take a stand and, and like one of them, uh, I think there's more talent uh, top to bottom in this race than the Florida Derby with, with 
you know, without uh, really working hard to, to say that. The challenge I had when looking at this, you know, I, I think in Florida Derby, Haiti's going to be out front and, and they got to come get him. I don't know who's going to be on the lead here. You know, there are five to six horses that want to do the same thing and that's stock. You know, mm-hmm. one of them has to be out front. So when, when you have, when you have that uh, challenge, you're, you're going to have, you know, just a big mess probably for uh, when you hit the top of the stretch. And then I think it just comes down to class. So ultimately I landed on Muth. I think he, he is the best horse in the race. I'm a little worried that, uh, you know, he's been a little inconsistent with training and, and he was scheduled to go in the San Felipe and everybody thought he was going there, did not um, end up being, you know, drawn in or, or go. So I'm a little worried about that piece of it, but I think he's the class of, of, of this race. And I ultimately ended up with him. Yeah, I think it's uh, we're going to be on the same horse here. I like number seven, Muth, quite a bit in this spot as well. Uh, I, I kind of agree with this comment. Uh, as far as the pace goes, I think time for truth is going to go. The four horse seems to be the one uh, to me that's going to take a, try to take him gate to wire here. Uh, just kind of how forwardly placed he's been in some of those sprint races. And I kind of agree. I kind of think if, if Muth, uh, you, you mentioned it, maybe he's a little bit, keyed up and, and maybe he tries to run with them too early and and gets into that pace duel or he's just not quite as sharp i think that's what you got to worry about with muth off 84 days rest but i'm kind of with curtis i i think the four gets in front and the seven just tucks right there behind him tracks him the whole way gets first run on the four and then it'll be just a matter of trying to hold off timberlake and mystic dan you know liberal arts uh things like that but at the end of the day i'm kind of with you i just think muth is the best horse he's the most talented horse you know i hate that we haven't seen him in 84 days but when he came back in the san vicente paul didn't you feel like geez he's he's getting better like he looked really good in that race i thought yeah without a doubt uh you know i i thought uh you know coming back uh, you know off the layoff that day he didn't look like he'd been out for a long time uh Mm -hmm. yeah i mean he 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 looked uh, like the best horse and and showed it easily that day yeah, I, I was I was very, very impressed with him in that race as well. So, yeah, I think we're both on uh, Muth. But before we talk about others, let's let's do some pretending uh, real quick here, Paul. Let's pretend that uh, Bob Baffert could run in, at, at Churchill Downs and in the Kentucky Derby. How do you feel like Muth? Let's, let's pretend like Muth wins how we think, like a, a solid win, right? How do you think he would rank up or, or stack up with these horses currently for the Derby? All right. You know, if you if you add the Bob Baffert uh, connections, uh, he would be your favorite uh, come come Derby morning. Yeah, uh, I mean he he looks like a, a solid horse. I mean his breeding says he's going to uh, run all day. Uh, good to Magic, Uncle Mo. You know he he should have no problem with the distance. It's a little. I think it's a little um, strange, kind of how Bob has has managed him. But but again all of Bob's horses have been managed a little differently because there's no Derby to aim at. So he's, he's got to aim at different races and, and keep these horses moving forward with some other end goal in, in play. You got to think it's Preakness, right? With Muth. I mean, yeah. this is a perfect setup, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think the distance will be, will be really good for him. He'll be, he'll be fresh uh, coming off. But uh, if, if Baffert were able to run in the Derby, and Muth goes out and wins the way you and I think that uh, he will on Saturday, I would think that he would have to be your favorite when, when the gates open. I think you're right about that. And, you know, look, I, I think I think a lot of years Baffert sends that second, kind of that second stringer to Oaklawn because, you know, winning, say, winning the San Diego Derby might be a little tougher. I think he looks at it this year and goes, okay, there's nothing in California. I can win the San Diego Derby with, you know, impl- uh, uh, wind me up or imagination or some horse I just grab out of my barn, uh, Bay Moon, you know, any, you know, any of those horses, they can, they can go out there and win it. So I need to send maybe my best one or most experienced one to Oakland this year because it's a little bit tougher. So I kind of think that's why Muth is here versus the Santa Anita Derby because I think Baffert thinks I've got that race on lock anyway. And, hey, if May Moon goes out and dominates the Santa Anita Derby, well, you got two horses heading to the Preakness that'll look pretty darn good. Um, 
who else you want to talk about? Like, who do you, who else do you like besides Muth in this race? Well, there's a big three, right? You know, Muth, yeah. Timberlake, you know, I mean, I thought Timberlake looked really, really good coming back from his layoff. Uh, and, and he, I think he showed us when, when he won last time out that that uh, Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile was a good race. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, he, he, he had a solid run there. Nobody was touching fierceness that day. But I, I think you have to respect him here. Uh, you know, if, if Muth, you know, and I think Muth is going to catch the lead um, at the top of the stretch. And if he's not quite ready to, to go the distance, then Timberlake is the logical horse that's going to come get him. I'm with you. I like Timberlake a little bit as well. I, I know we kind of, when we talked about the Rebel, we were like, ah, oh, this is really bad. And But you kind of want to beat Timberlake. You don't think he's very good. But when you watch Timberlake, that was okay. You know, the Rebel was fine. There isn't anything really to get pissed off about him about. I mean, he, he did not run very well. Uh, I mean, the Rebel wasn't a very good race, I should say, but he ran well. Um, so I don't know. I, I think he is kind of a, an interesting horse uh, as well that they could get up there and, and, and maybe pull the upset of Muth. It would be a mild upset. I, I, I'm going to make shoddy happy, but I think the five liberal arts, I think he may be the one at a huge number to get up there and really, and really cause some trouble. He reminds me a little bit, Paul, of uh, Honor Marie. If you remember Honor Marie, um, you know, last uh, last week in the Louisiana Derby, had that improvement, second off the layoff, ran second. I think Liberal Arts can make that kind of improvement here and maybe scare some horses, especially if the pace does kind of get hot. I think he's going to come running. What do you think of Liberal Arts? Well, you know, the first thing that you got to talk about uh, liberal arts is his sire, Arrogate, right? So one, you know, how phenomenal has, has he been as a sire and, and lost him way too early. But uh, yeah. I, I think liberal arts, is, he's he's the type of horse, just like Arrogate, that's going to continue to improve with two things, one with time and, and one with distance. So yeah. it, it would not surprise me at all to, to look up at the end of the day and, and see him, you know, coming – coming down and, and, and capturing this thing at the wire and, and taking it from somebody that, uh, uh, you know, like a Muth or, uh, you know, maybe Timberlake gets the lead and, and liberal arts comes in and, and, and gets him. One of the horse I really want to talk about, uh, is, is mystic Dan. And, and, and if I jumped out on you, I apologize, but no, you're right. I, I think this is, you know, we've talked about, right. We talked about it in the opening, um, a horse that, is athletic enough to come through traffic and win, you know, a crazy derby. Yep. This, this could be it, right? I mean, this could be him. And if you look at that last race, I mean, he came through the slop, he came through horses, he came up the rail uh, and just dominated that field. (laughs) Uh, And uh, I mean, it was, it was impressive to watch. I don't know where it came from. um, And I don't know if he can replicate it. And, And, he certainly, you know, could have jumped forward just because of the slop that day and the track. But if he is able to duplicate that performance, he's going to be there. Yeah, I know. He's 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 the weird one, right? Because like you're right. If he does that again, let's let's again pretend he does that again in the Arkansas Derby. Are are you and I like going to be sitting there the night before the Kentucky Derby, going, I can't believe. I'm betting on Kenny McPeak to win the Kentucky Derby because the bottom line, and you're right, the race he ran in that Southwest, it's it's better than anything we've seen, right? So is that a conversation you're ready to have if Mystic Dan does this again? I mean, I'm almost rooting against him so we don't have to have that conversation. I, I don't think I'm ever ready to have that conversation. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, again, the, you know, the, the, the horse – if he comes out and he, and he does that and he wins this race and, and I'm really, you know, let's say Muth is the goods, right. And, and Muth comes out and just dominates this race, but mystic Dan runs a really good second and comes through traffic again. Muth is not going to the Derby. He didn't have to face him again, you know, so he could come out of this, you know, finishing second and, and you're still yep. going, he might have a shot. Now I'd much rather him be second coming out of this race than first, because if he's second, he's going to go to the Derby and he's going to be 20 to one odds in the Derby. Um, and that's where you want to make peak. You want him at 20 to one, not five to one. So. Yep. Yeah. 
no, I totally agree with that. And I think that's the, that's you, you really want them at, at like 50 to one. No, just kidding. Not that high, but you do want a much better price. And, and it's kind of like magic said here, you know, even, even in this field at five to two, he's tough to swallow, even though it's like, oh man, he did run so well, but you're right. I mean, it is kind of the one outlier. I, I will say, you know, the maiden special weight going five and a half at Churchill, his second race. You go back and watch that. It did look similar ish to what he did in the Southwest. And I think my kind of thought process on Mystic Dan after he ran uh, the one mile uh, allowance at Churchill didn't look very good. And then ran the stakes race uh, at, at Oakland there, uh, the Smarty Jones, and he didn't look very good again. My thought was just cutting back, dummy, like cutting back to, to one turn. He's going to, or to five and a half, six furlongs. He'll be fine. And then he pops up and runs that race. So, my kind of theory on it is the 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 slop or the mud that day moved him up, and the rail maybe moved him up. Sometimes that rail can can play uh, to horses uh, when it's muddy at Oakland. So that that's my best guess, Paul. I just can't. I don't know. I just can't imagine him doing it again. I just can't. I, I can't either, and that's why that's why I didn't put him on top. I'm not. I'm not going to be surprised if we're sitting here, you know, Saturday evening, and 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 Mystic Dan has just somehow won this race. It wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. Um, one other horse I, I, I do want to talk about, I don't think he's a win contender. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just want to talk about him because, uh, anytime D Wayne's got a, a horse yeah, in, yeah. uh, in this race, you got to talk about him. Uh, and you know, how many times has he ran this horse? You know, are we, are we touching 20 yet? I mean, it's a ton, but just steel. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's going to win, but this, this is a horse that's going to be a high odds horse that, um, could definitely come in underneath and, and make that thing pay. Yeah, I mean, just steel is a horse at 15 to 1, and he's sitting here for his 11th uh, race. Uh, this 11th race of his career here. Uh, I, I mean, my goodness. He, you know, he he ran well, Smarty Jones in the Southwest, and he kind of said, I'm tired in the Rebel. That's what I, I, I felt like he was saying. He just didn't fire, and this is a horse that had been consistently firing. He hasn't had a break, Paul. So it's like I I don't know what's going to change for him going longer today in another race. Um, but you're right. I mean, it would be kind of cool to see D Wayne do it. I don't know. I I couldn't get there with him. I just couldn't get there with him. Um, I thought Dymatic, maybe second time facing winners, might could improve a little bit. I thought he was one to kind of take a look at. Curse Manlo keeps saying he thinks will uh, will take it is going to hit the board uh, fifty to one. On the rail, this horse is still a maiden, but did improve greatly last time out, going to mile 16th on a fast track. Only got beat a nose. Um, all right, anybody else you want to talk about before we go on? No, I, I think it. I think it's clearly, you know, how well does Muth do here? Um, is is he is he the horse that is going to go into the Preakness as the favorite? Uh, yeah. How good is Timberlake? Does Timberlake really want the, the distance? Uh, and is is Mystic uh, uh, Dan for real or not? I think it comes down to to answering those three questions, and you're you're going to get answers uh, Saturday night on those three. Yep, yep, for sure. And I think it it'll be a little depressing if our top choice number seven Muth does win this one because it's like oh man <laughs> like now what you know <laughs> so <laughs> he's not going to the derby but that's uh that is what it is uh all right we're both on mooth jared took number two timberlake so he picked both of his fantasy horses here and uh yeah we'll see what timberlake can do flavian pratt getting aboard there as well so number seven Timber uh mooth for both of us and then timberlake the two horse for jared all right Let's go now to uh, Dubai. Let's go over to Dubai. This is probably the one you really want to talk about. We're going to start with the UAE Derby to kick off the coverage here. A field of 13 here. All eyes on number five, Forever Young. This is a horse you own in fantasy. This is a horse John White has said is his number one Kentucky Derby horse out of right now. So I'll let you kick us off here. Thoughts on the UAE Derby? Well, for about a month, I've, I've been singing that song. Uh, you know, forever young. So <laughs> I, I don't, I don't think today is, is the day to get off of him. I, I you know, I watched uh, that Saudi Derby and uh, you know, when I watched it live, you know, I, I, I wondered what we had just seen, you know, I, yeah. I expected it to be, I expected it to be a runaway uh, with him just because of the hype that's on this horse. Uh, 
you know, and anybody that follows horse racing at all, especially this Derby trail, they know who this horse is uh, and they've heard about him. They've seen the hype, you know, but when you go back and watch those replays, you know, he did, he did everything wrong that day. It's probably the worst race that he's ran. But the one thing that, that I was impressed with is this horse wants to win. He yeah. came and got, uh, you know, a, a horse that ran fantastic that day. And, you know, John White, the one thing he was quick to point out was, you know, they smashed that, that record um, for mm -hmm. that by over a second and a half. I mean, just obliterated it. Uh, you know, so for him to do everything wrong that day, um, to have to come get a horse that was naturally built for that. And this, this horse does not want that distance. He wants, he wants every bit of this mile and three sixteen that he's going to get and longer. Um, you know, if he can make it to the Derby, he's going to relish the, the mile and a quarter, you know? So I think really this race comes down to how good is he, you know, we're, I think we're going to see him win. Um, and how good is he? I, I think that's the question. I think kind of everybody wanted that quick answer. Uh, I know I was getting a lot of texts that morning and I just kept telling people, it's like, guys, like, I, I don't know. Like the races over at Saudi are so strange. They play so weird. I said, let's not forget Derma Soda Gate lost that race and then went over to Dubai and ran like a house of fire. I said, that, that's really, you just can't tell. You just really cannot tell uh, what from that track over to the next. Uh, so I, I just, it's just like a wait and see. And that's kind of how I have for every young ranked. I've got him like, like five, six, seven around in there. And it's just like, well, look, I'm waiting for this race and we'll see what happens. I, I didn't love the performance, but I didn't really love anybody's performance in that race. And I think the biggest thing, and I think this determination is, has to be made who is, or slash what is book Dano? Is he a really good horse? Is he like a, at that distance? Is he very, very good? Or is he just kind of, he's not that great. He's a horse that won at Tampa and, and forever young could barely beat him. I think that's the key to me, Paul, when I watch it live, I thought book him down. ran a great race that day and probably should have won. Yeah, I, I think he probably should have. Right. Um, yeah. Again. And, and that's why, I, that's why I go back and, and certainly I'm biased, you know, because I own the horse in the fantasy league, but uh, I go back to there. There's a difference between a horse like forever young who sees a horse and has a desire to go get him and a horse like fierceness that comes up against Hades and says, I don't want any part of this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and that day, you know, I, I think we, we saw that he, he wants to win and you cannot tell me that, that horses, um, some horses are just built to win and they yeah. want it. And, and I saw that that day in him, uh, you know, he went and got that horse, uh, you know, it, it, he did whatever he had to do um, to get there. So that, that checked a box for me. Now, now the question is really how good he is. I don't know that we're going to have an answer after this race, uh, to be honest. I don't know that there's a whole lot of, of quality in this. I think Pandagate, you know, is an interesting, uh, you know, American horse that's coming over, you know, has good connections, has, has shown some good things in, in New York races. Uh, but I don't, I don't know that we're going to, no, have a whole lot of answers yet on forever young even if he wins this race yeah i'm with you on that one and you're it, it is something to be said for a horse that does everything wrong so to speak he didn't do everything wrong but he did a lot of things wrong and he still won so but now we need to see him do everything right yes. and win right yes. so he showed hard he showed guts he showed all that stuff but if he's kind of squirrely like he was in that last race, well, it doesn't really matter if he has hearts and guts. He's going to get beat by, uh, you know, a, a horse that's just better than him and more talented than him. Uh, moving on from it, well, I'm, we're both on him. Jared's on him as well. All three of us picked Forever Young. Uh, I think some main contenders, uh, I think Mendelssohn Bay, I, I, I almost put this horse on top. I, I, I think he's pretty darn good. I think he's coming into this race. Well, distance shouldn't be any problem for this horse whatsoever. So I did like Mendelssohn Bay quite a bit in this spot. Um, and you mentioned Pandagate. I I'm with you there, but you know, I, I really feel like, and I could get burned on this one, but I think Henry Adams, I know he's only been on the turf. I don't know. I just kind of feel like this is a horse it's going to show up with a decent race here as well. So I, I kind of went five, 10, eight, anybody else uh, that you thought about in this one? 
Well, any anytime uh, you know Aiden you know comes in, and typically it's turf, right? But you have to you have to pay attention to him, and uh, and, and you see where Ryan Moore landed. He he landed on yep. Henry Adams, so that logically would tell you that that's the strongest of, of those two. But if you remember, you know, last year, you know, the Japanese went to one, two, three, four in this race. Yep. Uh, you know, and we just don't know enough about uh, you know some of these Japanese horses, but there's a ton of them in here. You know, mm-hmm. so how how good are they? Uh, you know, obviously Forever Young leads, leads that pack and we, we all know about them, but, uh, if you remember two years ago, uh, you know, the Japanese, you know, got two entries into the Derby out of this race. Uh, yeah. so this is a race that, uh, that Japan has circled on their calendar and they've come and they've just completely dominated this race for, for years. So I, it would not surprise me, honestly, if any of these Japanese horses won this race. I looked at the six up for a long time and, and found a couple of replays. Uh, George Tessaro, uh, Tesoro, I don't know how you say it. But anyway, the six, uh, I think, does make a little bit of sense as kind of that quote unquote other Japan horse outside of Forever Young. Um, yeah. I mean, did you have one specifically or just like, hey, keep an eye on all of them? No, I, I think. I think, uh, you know, this is a tough race to, uh, to bet, uh, because yeah. for, forever young, that, that, that's a pipe dream. If you think you're getting nine to five on, on him in this race, uh, I mean, he's going to be bet down really hard. So it's going to be a tough, tough race to bet unless you really have somebody that, uh, that you like. And, you know, so, so many of these horses, we just don't know enough about, we don't see them. You got, like you said, you got to, you got to search, you know, the internet to find replays on, on some of these horses. Uh, but I am interested in, in seeing what all of these Japanese horses do. I mean, they come here to win these races. It, it is a little frustrating. These international races, when we get to these big, big cards and you really want to, you want to bet and you want to get serious about it. And then it's like, well, where do I get past performances that I can even read? You know, like, it, it is kind of frustrating. And so you do, you do your homework and you try to watch these replays, but at the same time, it's like, well, I don't really know. Okay. He looked okay, but like, who's this horse? Who's this horse? Who did we beat all this stuff? So it's, it does make it really tricky to handicap uh, these international races. You basically just have to go off the replays. So I'm with you on that one. All right. So we're all, all three on this one going to be on the number five forever young. Okay, before we move on, I do need to uh, do do a little advertisement for you here. Uh, the Florida Derby Betting Bible getting ready to come out. Uh, uh, it is working on it now. Jared's got to finish his portion of it up, and we will be ready to roll with it. It, it is for pre-sale right now, so if you're listening right now, go get your hands on the Betting Bible, but it is pre-sale. It'll come out in full tomorrow. My guess is sometime in yeah, mid Late afternoon, mid afternoon, maybe late morning if we're lucky. So that will be out. Uh, and that's going to cover all 14 races on the Florida Derby card and also the bonus races, two races Paul and I just talked about the UAE Derby and the Arkansas Derby. Let's not forget the betting Bible last weekend for the Louisiana Derby. If you played the bankroll article, uh, it got a combined. $825 profit. So one of the best betting Bibles we've ever done. And we hope to parlay that into success this weekend. So get your hands on the betting Bible now. All right, Paul, now that that's out of the way, let's go to the last race we're going to cover. It is the Dubai world cup. Um, look, it's a field of 12 this year. Uh, it'll be race nine there at Maidan. Uh, don't ask me the time. I think it's 1130 central, 1230 Eastern. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Could be wrong, but feel at 12. I thought this was crazy wide open this year. What do you think about the, the world cup? I, I think this is just an excellent race. Yeah. Uh, you know, even if you're not betting it and, and, and I understand if you're not going to bet, uh, you know, any of the races in Dubai, you have to watch this. There, there are just some fantastic horses in here, you know, Senior Buscador, you know, we, we'd love the horse, you know, he, he's just, uh, you know, gives you his a effort every time, mm-hmm. you know, is, is it good enough? I don't know. Uh, but just go down the field. I mean, one of the, the real difference between this race, obviously in the UA Derby is yeah, who, I don't know any of those horses in the UA Derby without, you know, doing a, a lot of studying, but yeah. go through this list, right. Uh, we know, 
all of these horses. You know, Laurel River and Defunded now run overseas, but they they were here, you know, uh, and they ran in America a lot. Laurel River was was on the Derby Trail, you know, a number of years ago and, and is overseas now running. I think I just think it's gonna be a fantastic race to to watch. Uh, and I think there's a number of horses that can win this thing. I ultimately came back to Ushba Tesoro. Um, I think he's got a great chance to to repeat here. I love Senor Buscador, um, and, and I think I know where you're going there. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to let you talk, and then 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 I'll, I'll talk about why I went to Ushba versus uh, Buscador. Yeah, look, I went senior Buscador because I I just want to root for him. You know, I to be honest, um, I will probably bet the UAE Derby. I probably will not bet this. I I think it's so tough uh, to win this race and to bet this race accurately. So uh, for and that's why I don't do product for for the for a Dubai World Cup night. Even though I know we'd sell some, it's like I don't have the knowledge to do it to, to where I would sleep at night knowing I gave out those picks. So, uh, but anyway, I'm rooting for uh, number ten senior Buscador. Uh, just an incredible, incredible uh, experience watching him uh, win that last race, uh, win win the Saudi Cup. So, if he could win the Saudi Cup and the Dubai World Cup, that would be amazing. I think the logical pick is Ushba Tesoro, though. I, I I think that makes a ton of sense. He's such a, I mean, he's world class. That's how that's how you described Ushba Tesoro. He's been everywhere. You know, he usually shows up and runs pretty well, minus the Breeders' Cup. He didn't run well, but everywhere else he has. Um, and my, my goodness, he he nearly got that Saudi Cup. It, they, they were right there together. So, uh, yeah. But look, I, I can't go against my Remington Park horse. I went number 10 senior Buscador on top. But I think my logic tells me, hey, Ushba Tesoro is going to be awfully tough in this race. Well, make make no doubt about it. When it gets comes to this race, I will be rooting for senior Buscador. That's the horse that I want to win. My challenge with him winning this race was quite honestly the mile and a quarter. I think mile and an eighth, and, and that's where all of his big stakes victories have come at mile and eighth or yeah, that mile and sixteen. I think that's really his sweet spot. Ushba um, showed last year that mile and a quarter is no problem for him. He he loves it. The horse that we haven't spoke about yet that could be the winner and could walk away from this thing easily, I think is Derma Sotagaki. I don't know what happened in yeah. Saudi, but remember last year he didn't win that at Saudi and came over here and just completely dominated this race. Yep. He looked phenomenal uh, at the Breeders' Cup last year. Uh, and you made the statement uh, uh, that at one point in time you thought he might, you know, be you know come and get uh, the winner of that race and and win you know and mm -hmm. he could come here today and if he if he won by five links on Saturday it would not surprise me I just don't know what to make of that uh, um, Saudi race other than to just throw it out and yeah. say are we going to get the Breeders Cup race out of this horse. <sighs> I I wanted to pick him so bad I I, I did and I I'm with you. I, it could just be a situation where we just don't like <laughs> running over at Saudi. <laughs> Who could blame him, right? But, you know, both of his races weren't very good there. You know, the Derby, obviously, he had his he had his problems, right? But uh, the Classic, he was very good. Like I said, I, I think he'll bounce back and run uh, quite well here. I, I really do. I'm with you on that one. Okay, there's Tate. Wish, wish you a happy birthday there, Paul. So. <laughs> You got, you got Tate. Hello, Tate. Good to see, or good to uh, see your picture, I guess there. So <laughs> um, what about this horse, uh, Cabricon, the six horse? Uh, to me, it's like, it's like, I just don't know. I don't know if he's classy enough, but man, he's looked very good in his two races at Maidan. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, um, I had him saved as a horse that I was going to talk about. And, uh, you know, one of you, one of the listeners obviously jumped here in here and stole my thunder, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I, cause I put that down. I was like, Hey, we have to talk about this horse, right? He, yeah. he won the local prep. Uh, you know, he's, he's by, you know, California Chrome, you know, so that's a horse that's won this race, uh, you know, and he's carrying a substantial amount of buzz coming into this race. He's another horse that, 
you know, what's he, what's, what are his odds when, when they break from the gate, right? He's probably not well known here in America, but in, in Dubai, they know this horse. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to, to see what his real odds are. I don't know if he's classy enough to, to take on the likes of, of Ushba, Senor Buscador, Dermaso Tagake. We haven't even talked about Newgate, right, yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I don't know if he's classy enough, but he's certainly an interesting horse that I that I'm going to be interested to see what he does in this race. Yeah, I this is kind of why I was saying it's like I, I just kind of want to watch this race because I do think the six he's he's one if you play him and he he doesn't run very well or whatever you go well why would he because look at all these horses he's got a face that are like world class horses versus what he's been beaten you know or you play against him and you go and he wins and you go well geez why wouldn't he win he's just dominating over the surface you know so he's one that can make you mad for sure and i think you could throw derma sodagate in there it's one that could make you mad one way or the other as well so yeah you're right it is it, it's going to be fascinating to see what he does uh, what a story if the six wins this race though i mean that would be incredible uh, a horse to rise up to this class level and win and Look, I mean, the numbers are there. You know, they do time form numbers in, in Dubai. He fits. Like, those two races, he got it there at Maidan. They they fit here. So, it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. All right. Is there anybody else you want to talk about? I, I think we could go down the list and talk about them all. You know, I, I really, you know, I mean, Clapton, right? I don't expect Clapton to win, but he's 60 to one. I mean, this is a horse that's been pointing to this race since last year. I mean, they yeah. bought this horse to, to run here, uh, you know, and, and Chad Summers is, uh, you know, he started with this race and then backed it up. And I love a trainer that has a destination with the horse and, and is able to, to back it up. I don't think he's got the class to win here, but would it surprise me if he hits the board? No. I mean, they, they have pointed this horse um, at this race for, over six months, yep. uh, you know, just going down the list, right. Croupy, you know, this horse is, is not talented enough to, to win this race, but he, he does crazy things and he, he comes from, from the back. And if somebody's out front running with defunded and they go some crazy pace, you know, could, could you see him, you know, hitting the board, uh, at the end? I mean, he has no problem running all day. Uh, yeah. but like I said, I, I just think it's a fantastic race to watch. Um, all of these horses, uh, I think, are really, really good horses um, if if they have their best day on Saturday. I still come back to um, Ushba, Senior Buscador, or Derma, I think, are the real class of this race. But I'm going to be I'm going to be fascinated to watch watch the race. And I really think it's going to be a fun one. Yep. It's going to be a good one uh, up at, in Dubai. You don't have to wake up that early to watch this one. The rest of the card, yeah, you're going to have to get up a little bit earlier than maybe you want to to start watching horse racing. I think I think we got to, let's see, first race in Maidan is going to be uh, 7.05 for us. But, oh, we can do that. We can do that, Paul. That's no, We'll be up. Paul and I'll be up. Don't worry about it. All right. All right, let's wrap this thing up here. And I wanted to end the show with this because you texted to me the other day and I thought, Huh, that's a really good question. I'm going to ask it on the show. And lo and behold, here you are. So I can ask you at the end of Saturday, who is your, who's going to be your number one horse for the Kentucky Derby? So here's where I have to separate, uh, you know, my, my heart from my head, right? Because mm-hmm. if Forever Young goes out and, and dominates his race, you know, he's the horse that I, that I want um, to win uh, yeah. the Derby. And I, I think after after Saturday, if he goes out and wins really handily, the the betting public, if the race was Sunday, would say that's that's my horse and and I'm going to bet on them. But I still think that uh, next week, and we're all going to be there uh, at the Bluegrass. I still think that uh, we're going to see Sierra Leone. I think he's going to put on a show, and he's going to face probably the best derby prep field that we will see this entire season and if he comes out of that and wins um then he will deserve to be number one so he's going to be number one on my list uh regardless of what happens this week until he proves that he shouldn't be there yeah and i think uh to, to curtis manlow's point here he's on door knock uh and he has been for months well i don't know months maybe too long but weeks for sure curtis i've known that and I think he comes into that that bluegrass with the same mindset of you, but he's talking about door knock instead of Sierra Leone. And 
to be fair to Curtis, we could be talking about door knock, you know, if he goes and wins that race uh, out at dinner Saturday night. And to be fair to us, Curtis might be talking about Sierra Leone if he wins by three or four. It does kind of feel like the bluegrass is setting up to be the biggest prep of them all. Um, yeah, I, I guess for me, I, I probably am I'm on the same answer, Sierra Leone. I'm ready to be off Sierra Leone. I'm just waiting for somebody to do it, right? And so Catching Freedom almost did, and maybe in the end, Catching Freedom will, will be my pick. But he rounds that race, and it's like, well, Sierra Leone did beat him when they faced. So if Sierra Leone improves like that, he's probably better than, than Catching Freedom. So I'm with him. Hopefully, hopefully it's somebody else. But hypothetical. Because I forever for, forever young is probably the first international horse where I've actually given it a thought. Maybe I'll bet him in the Derby. I, I could see it happening. But hypothetically, for you, like what's he got to do in this race over the UA Derby to where you go? You know what? I'm going to bet this horse to win in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, I, I think he has to do everything right. And you mentioned it earlier, right? So in that Saudi race, he did everything wrong and, and still got there, but you can't do that in the Derby. You know, he has to switch leads when, when he needs to, um, you know, he has to get out of the gate and, and not to get pinched. That was part of uh, Derma Sotogake's issue, uh, you know, last year, some of these horses have, have shown that they, they really struggle out of the gate when, when facing American horses, he has to get out of the gate. He has to get good position, he has to switch leads at the top of the stretch and he has to put those horses away. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think at that point in time, if he does all of that, uh, then I don't think I'll be a, afraid to, to bet him in the Derby. Sierra Leone scares me. We're, we're going to see him next week just because, you know, again, I, I envision that Mo Donegal path for him to get to, to the win. Yeah. I want to, I want to say, there's one horse that could come out of Saturday um, that could could change my mind um, and say, you know what, he's probably my number one coming out of this, and we'll see how Sierra Leone does. And that is if Mystic Dan runs that race again. Right. Yeah. I don't think he's going to, and that's why I don't. I I would not put him number one today. But if yeah, he yeah. runs that race again and he smashes Muth and Timberlake. He, he, the dis the discussion has to be had a thousand percent a thousand percent i don't think it's gonna happen but a thousand percent i'm with you i will be like well i mean what what can you really say so i'm with you on that a couple of horses coming up next week as well deterministic uh i i'm very interested to see what he does i'm pretty sure he's going to be in the wood what did what did you think of him i i for me if he can take a step forward second off the layoff, it's like, okay, he may be building something. What did you think of him? So I, I thought it was a great return, right? Uh, how could you not? Um, you know, I, he, he's a logical horse to win the wood. I, I don't think with that pedigree, he wants anything to do with a mile and a quarter. I could see him winning the wood. Everybody being super excited about him headed into the Derby and, and him finishing ninth or 10th and taking a lot of money, which is fine by me. Cause that's not a horse that, that I'm probably going to be betting in the Derby. Uh, just a touch was, was up on the screen just a second ago. And yep. we're going to see him next week at the bluegrass as well. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it, Cox has been very high on this horse since, since the beginning. And I'm, I'm really excited to see, Cause he's going to be out on the lead or near that lead, uh, you know, with door knock. And I think it's going to be really interesting to, to see how he rebounds. It's tough to gauge a horse, you know, that maybe didn't take to the slop and, and really how good they are. Uh, yeah. and that wood was a mess as well, uh, that day. And we've, we've seen that, that a lot through, through this, uh, derby prep season, just rain all over the place. And, uh, you know, hopefully we don't get that uh, for the Derby, uh, you know, especially because I'll, I'll be sitting there and I'll be <laughs> soaked, but uh, uh, you know, hopefully we don't get that. Hopefully we get a true, a true yeah. course to run at, but uh, I'm interested in seeing how just a touch does, because I think that that class at the bluegrass is going to really, really tell us how good he is. Absolutely. I agree. Just a touch is a good one as well. And another one in Sino, uh, a horse that has looked very good over at Turfway coming to the bluegrass. I'm, I'm thankful they're bringing him to, up to the dirt in the bluegrass so we can get that data point on him running on the dirt. But hey, he's another, he hasn't done anything wrong. Has he? I mean, no. he's been good. No, I, I, 
again, I'm, I'm really excited about uh, next week. I think deterministic, you know, I haven't, nobody knows really exactly all the horses are going to be in the wood. Uh, I think BU from Pletcher could, could end up there. Yeah. And that's a horse that, that's a horse that has ran against the best horses that, that this crop has and finally broke through last time. So it'd be, be interesting. That could be another one of those, uh, you know, how does Pletcher get five horses in the field this year? And he right, yeah. was there and, uh, you know, we, we, we talked about a Pletcher horse in, in the Arkansas Derby, you know, we could be looking here, you know, that day and going, how did he do it again? Um, okay. But I, I think there's, there's a lot of excitement for, for next, next weekend. Not only does it kind of bring a close to the Derby prep season, but, uh, you know, there, there's, some, I, I think the, the class potential class of the Derby field is going to be on display next weekend, this week. And I think, you know, your potential top horse coming out of here is, is going to be forever young. Uh, Muth is not able to run in the Derby. Uh, and even if he runs and looks special, he's headed to the Preakness. Forever young could be the best horse that we see coming out of this weekend. Yep. Yep. I, I, uh, I don't think you, I mean, I think it could happen. I really think it could happen. You look at how uh, the other races are kind of setting up. All right. Well, we got to get out of here because you got Iowa State basketball coming up here pretty quick. To update the basketball real quick, Clemson has moved on to the Elite Eight. Clemson has upset Arizona and it also looks like Connecticut is going to roll into the Elite Eight as well. Sorry, Paul, you're not going to get a break <laughs> even if you win. The uh, the Huskies are going to be waiting for you. So Connecticut well, you through uh, UConn, the break somehow becomes the Final Four. So you know, but uh, know. You're, you if if you're going to win the championship this year, you got to go through UConn sometime. Yep, I know, right? So you might as well might as well take your shot at them in the Elite Eight, and we'll see what happens. All right, once again, Paul, happy birthday! I hope this was the best birthday present that that anybody gave you today. Right, so far it has been, yes. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how the rest of the night goes. But uh, thanks for uh, the, the, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, come on. I really enjoyed it. And again, you know, what's better than spending an hour on your birthday talking about horses? Yeah, I, I I can't think of anything that would be better than that, Paul. I I certainly certainly can't. All right. Well, we better get out here before I say something dumb. So all right, Paul. Once again, thanks, Paul, for joining us uh, for this uh, show. It was a, a big show. We had a lot to go over, and uh, you did a great job, man. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Paul, for joining us. Everybody, root for Iowa State tonight for this guy. Hopefully they can get it done and get to the Elite Eight and close that birthday off with a victory. All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. We'll be back next week for more coverage. Make sure to get your hands on that betting Bible. that will be coming out soon. All right, guys, thanks, everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of Blinkers Off. Join our horse racing community at RacingDudes.com and follow us on Twitter at Racing underscore Dudes. Want to make money betting horses? Bet with the Racing Dudes. <laughs>